Calvin Can't Fly, read by Harrison Kirby, Emma Lally, Emma Ward, and Sophie Ward. Calvin is a starling. He was born under the eaves of an old barn with his three brothers, four sisters, and 67,432 cousins. Starlings have big families. Right from the beginning, Calvin was different. Right from the days, all the little starlings tumbled out of their nests to discover the world. Charlie discovered worms. Clement discovered dirt. Adeline discovered grass. Aubrey discovered water. And Calvin, well, discovered a book. While all of Calvin's cousins chased beetles, bugs, and ants, Calvin was learning to read letters, words, and sentences. At night, his cousins dreamed of insect eating and garbage picking. Calvin dreamed of adventure stories, legends, and poetry. He even dreamed that someday he'd become a great writer himself. When all the starlings lined up for flying lessons with their teacher, Mr. Wingstead, Calvin was nowhere to be seen. Where is that bird? Actually, Calvin was in the library. As the other little starlings were learning to swoop and hover and fly figure eights, Calvin buried his beak in books, and there his mind soared. Calvin read about pirates and cavemen, volcanoes and rainbows, whales and dinosaurs. Calvin especially loved dinosaurs. He learned how the planets circle the sun, what makes the wind blow, and amazing facts like how caterpillars grow up to become butterflies. His books took him to places wings never could, and his heart fluttered Calvin's with excitement. Calvin's cousins called him Nerdy Birdie, Geeky Beaky, and Bookworm. And when you're a bird, being called a worm is a very bad thing. Calvin ruffled his feathers and mumbled, Oh, how the wounding words of scorn do sting. Then he sadly waddled back to the library, the only place where he was happy. And so he spent all summer reading, learning, and absorbing everything his little starling mind could. Until the first leaf turned orange and fell to the ground. The fall winds sent a chill through the old barn. Summer's nest blew to the floorboards. It was time to head south. His cousins warned, Calvin, you better learn to fly. In a couple of days, we've got to be out of here. Calvin said, ah, yes, migration. I've read about that. His sister asked, Calvin, can you fly? Calvin had to admit he couldn't. All the other starlings took off in a giant formation, but Calvin could only stand and watch. A big, lonely tear rolled down his cheek. Calvin turned and trudged back toward the old barn. He was so upset, he didn't even notice his brothers and sisters and cousins coming back to get him. All of a sudden, they were tying up Calvin's middle with stringing scraps of cloth they had found in the garbage. They grasped the other ends with their beaks and off they flew, with Calvin, someone embarrassed, safely in tow. For days and days they flew. Calvin recognized the rivers, mountains, and towns he had read about all summer. Excitedly, he pointed them out to his brothers, sisters, and cousins. But the other little starlings just flapped their wings and headed south. Soon there came a day when the winds blew especially hard. Trees bent sideways, leaves scattered wildly. Flying became harder and harder. The air had an odd smell to it. The smell of danger. Calvin, remembering back to his favorite weather book, warned the rest of his family. A hurricane, a hurricane is coming. All his brothers and sisters and cousins asked, What's a hurricane? Calvin explained, as quickly as his little beak could, We need to get out of the path of a violent tropical weather system which is storming up the coast at a tremendous speed and will not diminish until it counters large stretches of landmass. Everybody, make haste into that cave. They had no idea what Calvin was saying, but they had to admit, it did sound real. So, the flock made a loop-de-loop -loop left, a dipsy doodle right, and dove into the cave. They did everything Calvin told them to. To their amazement, a great storm did blow across the land. It thundered over the mountains, it roared through the villages, it smashed and crashed, rumbled and raged, just as Calvin had predicted. The whole big starling family gathered together, watching in fear and awe. The storm finally ended. The sun came out in the sky, and the starlings came out of their cave. They were safe and sound, all because of Calvin. They celebrated with a great starling party in honor of Calvin. 
They ate big, juicy worms and yummy, crunchy beetles. They danced and sang songs about how Calvin had saved their lives. They toasted Calvin with acorn caps filled with fresh, clear mountain water. Calvin was so happy and felt so good deep down inside that he jumped and hopped and danced and flapped his wings. And flapped his wings. And flapped his wings. And the other starlings looked at him in amazement. Calvin, you can fly, they exclaimed. And Calvin, the happiest starling in the whole wide world, chirped. Why? Yes, I do believe I can. And they all flew south with big, wide smiles on their little starling faces. Especially Calvin.